<laughs> Slick Rick has been waiting for the spot all night. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, I finally, I finally got in the spot against RV Phil, and it's a ten thousand eight hundred dollar pot here. Yo, what's up? We are back for our second poker vlog, and this is another big one. This is a live stream five ten twenty five cash game here at TCH. I'm just rewatching the stream now. We also played the biggest pot of our life. So hope you all enjoy this one. Thank you guys so much for the continued support and love on this channel. A lot more is coming your way. Hit that like button, comment, subscribe, enjoy the show. Okay, welcome in and let me give you all a bit of context before going into today's video. I'm an inspiring elite professional, meaning I want to play the highest stakes cash game, the highest stakes tournament and crush at that level. But right now I'm not there yet. I am just working up the stakes. I am playing Two five on a day-to-day -day basis, just trying to get better as quickly as possible. Working with the legend John Little on a weekly basis. Speaking of, I will have some poker coaching links at the bottom if you want to check those out. But anyways, getting back on track, heading into this game, this is by far the highest stakes we've ever played. So we sold a bit of action to stay responsible bankroll wise. And I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. I definitely was, but overall still confident in my game. And the goal of this session wasn't to make a lot of money. The goal of this session was to learn, was to observe. And at the end of the day, just have Fun. So for me, game plan wise, it wasn't anything too crazy. It was pretty standard for the most part. Stay on the tighter end, but staying aggressive. But as you will see later in the video, some of that stuff just goes out the window when I'm playing because I love to battle. I love to fight and I love being competitive. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to share some of the context shares. What's what's in my mind going into this game, but enough talking. Let's get this show started. All right. Well, here we go. First hand of the day. And at the beginning of every stream, every dealer change, we do a PLO flip here at TCH and we start with a hundred dollar flip. You're going to notice I flip over just two cards for the sweat. We flip over queen nine and immediately make trips on the flop. Run out is the deuce of clubs and the five of diamonds and the trip queens hold. So we pick up this hundred dollar flip and immediately win $600. This is already over a buy-in at two five. Guys, should we just leave the table now? But jokes aside, it's always good to win the first hand of the day. It gets the nerves out and just frees us up. So let's get right into the action. Okay, we immediately pick up an interesting spot on the ninth hand of the day where we pick up king six offsuit in the big blind. It folds around to us and we decide to limp in. To be honest, guys, I think a raise here would be slightly better. Looking at the charts, it definitely does prefer a raise with this holding. But in game, we decide to limp in and Danny checks his option. So we go to the flop of three, seven, four, two diamonds. We check and Danny bets $25. I think we can definitely raise here with the gutter. However, I thought that my king high with the gutter actually had pretty good value against majority of his holdings. So I didn't think a bluff was necessary or even a semi bluff. Yeah, so we go to the turn. Turn is the ace of hearts. So it brings in another flush draw. And when we check it over, Danny now over bets this turn for $150. I think this is a point where I probably should give up. We have so many aces, so many flush draws, so many other pairs that we can continue with. And I think calling here is obviously just way too loose. I know that. But when he over bets, he's also very, very polarized. And my king high can be good sometimes. This is our first time on stream and I want to set the tone early. So we decide to continue one more time with King High. Very, very interesting spot. And the river is the seven of spades, uh, which is pretty much a brick. And we check it one more time and Danny over bets once again for $600. This is the highest stakes we've played and we are thinking about a King High call for a $1,600 pot. Yeah, when we think about this, the river changes nothing. So what are his value hands for this sizing? Lots of straights and some boats. Now, what are his bluffs? All the combo draws that miss. And given that everything missed, I actually lean more towards calling with this king high now. And again, I wanna set the tone early guys and let them know we are here to play. So we flick in the call and get the bad news. Danny has five deuce offsuit for the turn straight, obviously. So we lose a $1,600 pot very early on. But to be honest, guys, I'm very proud of this play. I think it shows my development as a player. And I know that many of you guys are going to be like, well, what, what are you talking about? Th this is just a straight punt. But I went with my read. I wasn't scared of the money that had nothing to do with my decision. And that to me is a good sign that I'm here to play and that I can play here. So just wanted to share this one with you. It's an interesting one. We probably could have lost 
again, way less money. This is this is just very loose, guys. But you know, a little blind versus blind or big blind versus straddle situation. I think this is an interesting one, and I think king high sometimes is good. So we lose a pot, but here we go. Okay, next hand of the day, we pick up ace queen offsuit in the low jack. We make it seventy five dollars. Nick comes along in the cutoff with ace nine offsuit, and the legend RV Phil bumps it up to two hundred twenty five dollars from under the gun with king jack suited. I think it's pretty standard up to this point, given that we are in position and given Phil's activity, you guys are going to see later on, he's a very, very loose, aggressive player, tough to play with. But with ace queen offsuit, we're not going anywhere. We have lots of equity against this range. So we make the call and that brings along Nick as well. And so we go to the flop of queen 10, nine, two clubs. So Phil just flops the nut straight and actually checks this one over. I do think that a check here is good from Phil. And with my top pair, should I start protecting? I didn't think so. I don't feel comfortable bloating up the pot in such a dynamic board that I really wanted to pot control and evaluate turns. The turn is the eight of hearts and now Phil makes a big bet of $425. And given there's a player to act, I think that this just becomes an easy fold. And yeah, I, I make the fold and this is why I like my check back on the flop because this is a board where my top pair is likely not going to be good on the river. So it doesn't do me any good to bloat up the pot multi way. And yeah, just fold and move on. All right, next hand of the day, we have six deuce of hearts in the straddle. Nick raises it up to $75 in the low jack with pocket eights. Phil makes a call with king deuce suited in the small blind. Ben then now also comes along and we have six deuce suited in the straddle. So we make the call given all the odds. Flop is pretty, nine, nine, three, two hearts. And Nick continues the aggression by betting pretty big on this board, $225. I don't think he should have that many big bets on this board multi-way. But with this hand, I definitely now I think prefer a check raise. I think all nine X would wanna raise here given there's a flush draw and we have a lot of nines in our range compared uh, to Nick. So yeah, I wanna raise. And we really don't have any other good bluffs other than ones that we're basically holding. So not sure what I was really thinking, but we call out of position, which I don't really like, you know, on brick turns, what are we gonna do? Check fold river or check fold turn. So I'd much rather put the pressure on, increase our fold equity, and we have way more nine X again in, in our range. So we just, we just check rates, but we call and get help immediately with the seven of hearts and turning a flush. Yeah, we just now decide to take the betting lead and bet out small for $250. And Nick makes the call. River is pretty much a brick, jack of spades, and we make another small bet of $425, especially, you know, essentially a third pot bet. I think this is a pretty cool sizing because it gives a pretty good price on our bluffs, but also gets paid a lot when we have it. So we go for a small sizing and Nick wisely lays this hand down. So we pick up a nice pot with six deuce of hearts. Okay, in hand 29, we pick up king jack suited in the hijack. Now it's 5, 10, 25, 50. So we raise it up to $125. Danny calls in the cutoff with queen 10 suited and Phil in the straddle with ace king, the big slick, bumps it up to $350. What a great spot for Phil. And coming more from a tournament background, I thought that this would be pretty much a snap call. But when we really look at the charts, it does not like king jack suited. And that's because we are dominated here a lot, like this exact situation. It actually prefers lower suited connectors than a hand like this. So I thought that was interesting to look at, but in game I call and Danny also comes along. And flop is not great, king, four, three, two spades. So I think it's a good hand, but it's actually not. And again, this is the problem of flatting hands like this. We are just dominated so much. So everyone gets a piece on this board and Phil continues with a slightly lower than half pot bet of $425. I do like this bet. I think it puts a lot of pressure on ace high holdings and pocket pairs. And it's just a board that he will continue a lot on. Given we have a king, we are not going anywhere. And Danny is also going to call in position with his flush draw. Now the turn is the queen of diamonds. So now we pick up a flush draw to go along with our pair. So a very, very good hand. And Phil actually checks this over. I am not sure why. I think he may be worried about king queen offsuit or king queen suited which I think I can easily have some possible pocket queens. But the issue with this check is that there are so many draws out there 
that we can get value from. So many top pairs, so many second pairs. And being out of position in Phil's shoes, I just don't wanna give my opponents free cards and I'm not folding to a bet anyways, right? Like if I check this over and let's say I bet big, is he really folding ace king? No, right? So I don't love this check. I would pick a pretty big sizing as well, around 75%. So around $1,700, $1,800 and puts a lot of hands in a tough spot. Obviously we would have called. And I do think there was a lot of value that was missed here. But when he checks it over, I'm going to take a free card. I think this is a good one to put in our checking range. And Danny also makes the call. I mean, makes the check. River is the five of clubs and Phil checks it again. I think again, he should value bet here. Any king queen would have bet on the turn. So I want to value against worse kings like mine and queens. So yeah, but as played, we all check. I thought my hand was very good, so I quickly flip it over. But we see the bad news, ace king, uh, which again, I was very surprised to see. So we lose a pretty decent sized pot there with king jack of diamonds. In the hand, immediately after, we pick up pocket nines in the low jack. We raise it up to $75, straddle is off. So HCR calls now with ace nine offsuit in the big blind and Phil calls with eight five offsuit. You're going to see that we battled pretty hard with Phil in this stream. We have a lot of, again, lot, lots of hands against Phil. Not sure if Phil will be watching, but shout out Phil. Very fun battling against you. But anyways, the flop is four, seven, six rainbow. Pretty good for our nine. So when we check it over, I decide to bet pretty big for $125, just over half pot. And RV Phil with his flop nuts just makes the call. Again, I think a check raise here uh, is pretty cool. He has, this connects with him so much. So when he does bluff, this is also a good one for him to bluff. So I think when he does flop the nuts, I think he should go for it here. Anyways, he makes the call. Turn is the three. So any five now makes a straight now. So I check this one back when Phil checks it over. Again, we don't really love this hand with pocket nines. The river is the jack of diamonds. And now Phil makes a quick pot size bet of $500. I think given Phil's activity, he does have lots of bluffs. Again, if he's flatting a five offsuit, he's flatting a lot of hands. He could be turning a lot of second pairs, third pairs, into bluffs and we really don't have any fives in our range. So I do think that this may be good sometimes. I do think that nines is probably the worst bluff catcher or eights, pocket eights and pocket nines is probably the worst bluff catcher because it blocks lots of floats that he could have. All the eight nines, all the 10 nines. So it's not a very bluff catcher. And I'd rather call with a hand like a seven suited, for example. And I didn't think that much about it in game. I just thought that he has lots of bluffs. So we flick in the call once again and we are shown the bad news. And overall, about an hour into the session, we are seeing that people aren't really bluffing us and I'm calling things down a bit too light. So can we make the adjustment? We lose another big hand with pocket nines, but let's keep moving forward. Okay, about an hour and a half into the stream, we are playing our first knit game. For those that don't know the knit game, everyone in the table has a knit button. You get rid of the knit button by winning a hand and showing that to the entire table. The last person to get rid of this button owes the table $100 plus the dealer. So there is $900 at stake here. It's actually a very, very big knit game. So it's going to really, really widen up people's ranges and provide lots of action. And the first hand does exactly that. We have the beautiful ace four of hearts in the hijack. We raise it up to $75. Tom calls in the cutoff with king six of spades and Carlos calls in the straddle with ace four offsuit. Flop is queen six five, two diamonds and we check it over to Tom. I think being out of position, we check this one a lot. And now Tom bets out $75 with second pair. Carlos makes the call with his backdoor straight draw and us with no diamonds or clubs decide to uh, spice things up with our ace four of hearts and raise it up to $325. We would do this with our strong queens and some over pairs for value, some sets. I don't mind this bluff. I think with the backdoor straight with one over card, I think this is an okay one. You'll see these sorts of holdings bluff a lot in tournament play, so that's why I did it. I'm not sure about cash, probably not a good bluff. But yeah, we don't get the good news when Tom makes the call in position. Carlos folds and we pick up more equity when the seven of clubs comes on the turn, so we pick up an open ender. I again wanna continue to put pressure on and win the first hand of the knit button, so we continue with a bet of $500, we've been very, very standard to this point and haven't really gotten out of line. So also want to maximize on the table image at this point. And yeah, Tom quickly folds the best hand. We show the table, ace four of hearts. 
and get rid of the knit button immediately on the first hand. So always, always get to see. Okay, another quick hand that I wanted to show you guys in this first knit game, HCR with queen five offsuit in the button. Decide to raise things up pretty big to $150. And Benham comes along in the big blind with king eight of hearts and me in the straddle call with 10, seven of spades. Again, guys, it's going to widen people's ranges significantly, especially on the button, especially in later positions. And yeah, flop is ace nine nine, HCR, C bets for $175. Benham floats with his king high and we decide to put pressure on on this one and raise things up to $625 and we get pretty quick folds from both of them. And the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because I'm happy. I'm really, really happy that I chose this spot to bluff. And I think it shows that I'm paying attention. Oftentimes I think people miss good spots to pick up because they're just lazy, talking, whatever. And for me, I think it's very, very important to pick up every easy pot that I can. And that's really important. And I thought this was a very, very good opportunity to do that. So it's good to see my reads are on point and good to see that I'm not scared to make these aggressive plays. So yeah. Just wanted to show you guys this one. Let's keep moving on. Okay, next hand, we are battling once again with Phil. Phil limps in with pocket eights. And I look down at ace jack offsuit in the straddle and I decide to squeeze things up to $125. And Phil is obviously not going anywhere with pocket eights. Flop is 10-5 deuce, two spades. Uh, and Phil leaves out for $100. I think with ace of spades and two overs, we have an easy float here in position. I almost thought about raising in position, but again, given the good price, given the two overs, given the spade, I think calling here is fine. The turn is pretty good, the jack of spades, and Phil now checks this one over. And I think I missed some value here. I think checking is okay, but with our top pair and ace of spades, we definitely wanna go for value against tens, other pairs and draws. But in game, I decide to check this one over and the river is another 10. It's not very good for our pair of jacks. Phil does have a lot of tens when he leads, but when Phil checks it over, I have to now go for value. And we pick a sizing of just about half pot, $225. Phil quickly looks us up and we pick up another small pot with ace jack. Always good to see, always good to pick up these uh, medium sized pots to uh, bump our stack up a bit. Okay, in the hand right after, Nick raises under the gun plus two to $100. JD calls with pocket fours in the low jack and we pick up king queen of clubs in the big blind and we squeeze pretty big to $500 being out of position. I do think this is slightly on the larger end. I do typically go 4X out of position and add in another bet uh, for every color. So I think $500 is okay. But yeah, we squeeze pretty big and unfortunately we don't get folds. Nick makes the call and JD makes the call. So we are going pretty big. We're going uh, over $1,500 in the pot out of position. So let's see what the flop brings us and flop is pretty good. King, five, deuce. Two spades, very good flop for us. Not a lot of ace king out there, so we typically have the best hand. We see bet small for $600. We would do this with a lot of our holdings and they both fold. So we pick up another big pot, very easy one. Let's keep going. Okay, not much has happened for a while. And now in hour two-ish, the second Nick game is on. And again, it's the same thing, $100 to each player and $100 to the dealer. And again, in our first hand, we get a little bit spicy. We pick up pocket sevens in the hijack. There's a $50 straddle. We call Phil's open of $225. And that also brings Carlos in the straddle with nine, eight offsuit. And we get a pretty good flop. We flop top set seven, five, four rainbow. When our opponents check it over, we still want to bet. And I decided to bet just around half pot, $350. And that brings Carlos with his gutter to turn is the eight of hearts, which is probably one of the hands that we did not want to see. And now Carlos leads out for $550. And I'm not loving this spot anymore, but with boat outs, we are not going anywhere. So we flick in the call and evaluate any river. And we go to the river, which is the deuce of spades. So pretty much a brick, doesn't change much. And Carlos checks this one over and we quickly check back and we win again the first hand of the second nick game and pick up a nice pot of two thousand four hundred ninety dollars pretty big pot i'm not sure if i could have gone for more value here given that carlos probably never ever checks straights given the nick game given the dynamics 
but I was also just not sure what we can get called by. So I just decided to check this one back, but I don't know, maybe we should go thinly for value here next time. Also, again, given that it's a Nick game, we would probably want to bluff this run out if we had bluff. So I think with top set or not top set anymore, but with set, we might go here thinly for value, but I got a little bit scared. Check this one back, but it's always good to pick up a pot like this. So we are up 2.5, 3K up at this point. I'm feeling great, playing great, and we go the next basically hour being super, super card dead. One of the most card dead I've ever been. Seeing flops, just not hitting flops, not getting cards. And so yeah, we chip back down to a stack just over $1,000 from a starting stack before the next Nick game begins. And guys, our third and final Nick game, and a little preview, this one was not fun, not fun. After about 30 minutes of being super card dead, it's up to me and Danny with the last nit button. And there's again, $900 to play for. I'm not going to commentate too much. I'm just going to show you what happened. with hands like 10-4 suited under the gun plus two, calling with 5-3 suited, raising $400 with 10-5 off suits, missing flops again and again until we finally lose the Nick game. So we go from two to 3K at peak to now down around 3K after this Nick game. It just shows the swings of poker and especially when you add a high variance game like this. I probably could have wait, lost way less by not punting and just losing the Nick game. But that's the way it goes sometimes. We are also on stream. We got a battle, we got a fight. But yeah, sometimes it doesn't go your way. And I think the lesson here is that it's probably better to just lose the Nick game than trying to really punt your stack off to not lose $900. But just wanted to show you guys everything. That's what happened. So we just got to chip back up. So yeah, we lose the Nick game. So now I need to top up and we buy in for $3,000 more. So we are in for $8,000 total for the day. The most I've ever been in for a cash game. And this leads us to the next hand of the day, which are, turns out to be the biggest pot of my career. So let's go. And the biggest pot is obviously with no one other than RV Phil. There's a $50 straddle and Phil with the beautiful ace jack suited raises to $225 in the hijack. We're on the button and look down at the big slick ace king off suit in the button. We pumped this up to $700, folds around to Phil, who asks, how much do we have in our stack? We tell him we started this pot with about $5,000 and he just rips this in. And I'm honestly not thrilled, but obviously we snapped this off. 
Against Phil, we, we're gonna just snap it off. And before we know it, there's about $10,000 in the middle. Phil at least shows us the good news and shows us Ace Jack suited. So we do have him dominated. We agreed to run this twice and we're going to the runout. One of the biggest equity sweats of my career. Again, over $10,000, the biggest pot of my career so far. Yeah, let's go, let, let's just go to the run out. He has ace jack of spades. I just wanna win the first one, guys, honestly. The flop is queen, queen, 10, pretty good, pretty good. Gives him some chop outs. You know, I'll let him take the chop for the first one. I just wanna win one. You know, I'm not, I'm not greedy. I'm not gonna ask for much. The turn is clean, four of clubs. So one more card to go to win the first board. The river is the deuce of spades, which is great, right? So it eliminates some of his spade outs for the next run as well. So now lock up the first half. Can we win the second for our biggest pot? Second flop, let's go. It's king high, king eight five. Pretty much wins it on the flop, but obviously I'm not going to speak too early. Let's just go to the turn. Let's just rip this off. Come on, let's just get this over with. I can't, I, I, I hate this part where we have to wait for stream. Let's just rip it off, guys. The turn is good. Turn, we have him dead. So we pick this up. What a massive pot. We scoop a pot. I think, so she's doing the count now. I think the graphics are slightly off. We had under $5,000. I believe we had just about $4,975, just $25 less. So plus the blind, I believe it's $10,040, making this the biggest pot of our career. I mean, shout out to Phil. He knows that he knows that we needed the help. So thank you, Phil. I'm sure I'll see you soon. And hopefully I'll, 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 I will donate and punt to you next time. I'm not, I'm not there yet in my career, but I appreciate the help. It goes a long ways. And yeah, we pick up a massive one. This does, this is just massive for the morale. We've just been super, super card dead. Picking up, up a massive pot after being down 3K is just, just very, very good for the morale and continuing this momentum and as i told you we are here to battle and i'm going to get after it no matter what i open ace two suited to 150 dollars after a 50 dollars straddle and nick three bets us in the button to 425 dollars with jack nine offsuit we have one of the best candidates i think to four bet bluff with with a lot of these suited low aces and against the wider button range i think this is the perfect timing so we four bet to 1200 dollars and get a snap fold from Nick. Again, I'm showing this because it, you know, it's a quick one, but it's important to me. And what's important to me right now is the analysis and growth. And I'm not going to just sit there for the next hour of this stream because we locked up a profit. I don't care about that. And at this current stage, my biggest focus is growth. And for me, my best way to grow is to put myself in uncomfortable situations as many times as I can. And I'm very happy looking back that I chose this spot. Again, this is the biggest stakes we've ever, I only, I usually play just two five guys. So picking a four bet to $1,200 with ACU suited, it might seem easy for folks, but sometimes it's not. And whether it, this worked or not, this is the mindset that I need to continue to have in my opinion to get better as, as quickly as possible. And we are getting after it once again in the hand right after. When Benham opens to $75 under the gun plus one with his pocket jacks, with queen jack suited, I think we can flat or three bet. And I decide to go again for the more aggressive option now and three bet to $225. This brings a call from Phil with his ace nine offsuit, I believe in the straddle and Benham calls as well. So now flop is ace 10 three pretty good board for us and we have a pretty good hand to start semi bluffing with so when they check it over we see bet small for 225 dollars and phil makes a call with his pair of aces obviously and benham gets out of the way the turn is the last jack in the deck benham would have turned a set and now phil leads out small for 325 dollars not sure what to make of this play but with a pair and a gutter, I don't think we're going anywhere for this price. So we decide to call this one in position. And the river is pretty nice. It's the king of spades. So we get there for the Broadway straight. Benham made a good fold. He would have lost a lot of money hitting that jack. So we get there for the Broadway straight and Phil checks it over. We definitely need to go for value. And we pick a sizing just above half pot, just trying to get paid. I thought about even just going smaller, but I'm sizing just above half pot, $1,100. And Phil makes the correct lay down. So we get there on him on the river. So we scoop another decent pot of $2,890. So just continuing this positive momentum after that massive, massive 
10K pots. So it's been a pretty good day guys. And this brings us to the last hand of the day against no other than our man RV Phil. And let me just pause this video right here. I think obviously, you know, this video we've battled with Phil a lot, but I think this is something that you see a lot in cash games or in tournaments if you play with someone for a long time. I think at a table, there's always that specific dynamic that you just play with a lot. And it's obviously given a lot on our position. RV Phil is right on our left, you know, and he gets a lot, he gets after it. We also get after it. So I think it's just a dynamic that was created during the stream. And again, it was super, super fun to battle with. And I think again, the, you know, this is just more general speaking. I think you always see, you know, you you'll notice, right? If you sit at a cash game long enough, like eight, 10 hours, you tend to play with a specific opponent a lot. But anyways, let's get again into the action. There is a hundred dollar double straddle now and we raised to $250 in the cutoff with 10, eight of spades. Phil in the double straddle bumps it up $400. Given this holding and the price we're getting, I think we have an easy, easy call in position. Flop is pretty good, 10, five, four, two hearts. And when Phil checks it over, I think I should probably bet for value, but given a small three bet, I'm not sure how to play this hand. And when it's strange, I elect to go for the lower variance route and just check it back. Turn is not as good. It's the ace of diamonds and Phil checks it once again. And I have an easy check back, I think again with my pair of tens. And now the river, is the three of spades and Phil quickly leads out for a pot size bet of $800. I'm not sure what's going on here. It's such a weird hand, but I think looking back, this is probably a spot where I want to overfold. I can't really put him on a range. This is something that just doesn't really happen. A small min click from a double straddle. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't really see any bluffs either. I think this is a spot where I just kind of sigh and give this to him versus trying to be logical and call with a pair, get, you know, trying to make a stand, but I don't know. We're kind of a calling station today, as you guys seen, and we make the call. He shows us the bad news and we lose a pretty sizable pot of just over $2,000 to end this session. Well, that wraps it up for us. We were in the session for $8,000 and end the day, $9,065. So a nice little profit of $1,065. Just happy to end my first live stream cash game with a positive score. This is the highest stakes we've played. So happy with most of my play. And I thought it was pretty decent for the most part. I definitely do feel like there were instances where I took the lower variance route, a little bit passive route, because I was kind of worried about the stakes we were playing. But I think this is something that we will continue to get better at and improve over time. So hope you all enjoyed this second vlog. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. My vision is to be the best poker player ever and the best poker content creator ever. So I appreciate any feedback, positive, negative, constructive, and do hit that like button and subscribe. It does help me out a lot. And I will see you all next time. Good luck us.